appreciate Pastor Amen taking a chance on me. Amen coming and preaching here. What a wonderful place this is. Greetings from Prescott, Arizona. Amen. They love you and your pastor in Prescott. Amen. What uh, God is doing. And uh, thank God for his goodness, man. I'll tell you what. If you're not saved, amen, you're missing out on the, the greatest thing that was ever, ever done. Hallelujah. And uh, that's a wonderful, wonderful amen thing to do. I, I uh, want to speak tonight, amen, out of John chapter 11. And uh, want to read this scripture because there are some things that just don't make sense to me. Arsenio Hall used to have a program, you, may, you might remember Arsenio Hall, um, you young, you probably don't remember, but Arsenio Hall used to have this little segment on his show, and uh, he, he, it was called, Things That Make You Go, Hmm? Right? And uh, there's things in the Bible that make you kind of pause, and uh, there's things, amen, that you see that just, uh, maybe it hits you a bit wrong. And in John chapter 11, there are several things that make me go, hmm, <laughs> amen. John chapter 11, verse 1, And a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her uh, sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother's, uh, brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. And Jesus heard that, he said these words, This sickness is not unto death, but the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he had heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. And after, he says to his disciples, let us go down to Judea again. And the disciples said, well, Rabbi, lately the Jews have sought to stone us, and you want to go there? And Jesus said, are we not, is there, is there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. These things he said, and afterwards... He said, our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I might wake him. And his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he must be getting better. Amen. However, Jesus, didn't sp Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought he was speaking about uh, taking a rest and sleep. And Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I'm glad for your sake I wasn't there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Then Thomas and this surprises me because it's not Peter. Peter's usually the big mouth, right? And Thomas says, who is called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, let us go, let us go that we may die with him. <laughs> I don't know whether that was sarcastic or whether that was heroic, but to me it sounded like most disciples I know, that was going to be sarcastic, you know what I mean? Let's all go down and die, you know? Let's just go down there, you know? Have you ever... And when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and, and, and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went to meet him. And Mary was sitting there in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And even now I know that whatever you ask of God, he will give you. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said, I know. I know that he will rise in the resurrection in the last days. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he's dead, he shall live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said, yes, Lord, I believe that you are Christ, blah, 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 the Son of God who came to the world. I, I, you, you know, I, I kind of feel there's a little bit of resistance here. I don't know about you. But he, Jesus comes down, and the first thing she does is says, where have you been? You know what I mean? I could almost see her. I mean, if it, was in, if it was in my neighborhood, she would have done the head thing, you know. 
If Jesus, if you were here, and the hip would go out. <laughs> if you were here, my brother wouldn't have died. I, I don't know, I don't know about you, but I kind of feel there's a little bit of there's a little bit of resistance there. And I'll tell you why, because the Bible goes on to say, and when he, uh, when he had said these things, she went her way secretly, calling Mary her sister, saying, The teacher has come and is calling for you. And as soon as she heard that, she rose up and she came to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the town, but was in the place where Martha had met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house were comforting her. When they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, followed her, saying, She is going to the tomb to weep there. And when Mary came to see Jesus, he was, uh, she fell down at his feet saying to him, guess what? <laughs> the exact same words. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. It was almost, to me, sounds rehearsed. I don't know. You, you read it. Therefore, Jesus saw in her weeping, and the Jews came under her weeping. He groaned in his spirit and was troubled and he said, where have you laid him? And they said, him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus, Jesus wept. And the Jews said, see how he loved him. And some of them said, could, he not, uh, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind have kept, uh, kept this man from dying? And Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb in the cave, and the stone, and he, uh, the stone laid against it. And Jesus uh, said, take away the stone. And Martha, the sister of him who had died, said to him, Lord, by this time he stinks. He's been dead four days. And Jesus said to her what he says to a lot of us. What did I tell you last time we talked about this? <laughs> did I not say to you that you would be, if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Has God ever spoken to you that way? Don't you remember? Don't, you know what? Didn't I tell you, amen, it's going to be okay? And then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying, and Jesus lifted up his eyes. And I love this prayer because this prayer wasn't for God and it wasn't for Jesus. He said I, he prayed these things for the pe because the people that were sitting there. Father, I thank you that you have heard me, and I know that you always hear me because of the people who are staying, standing by, the losers that are here with me. <laughs> Amen. I say these things because, uh, uh, you know, that they would believe me, that you sent me. Now, when he said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth, and he came out. You know, it's interesting tonight, amen, as you and I read the scripture, there's some things that make me go, hmm. This scripture is filled with this statement and the absolute, amen, you know, there was no doubting that Jesus loved these people. This scripture, uh, four times at least, amen, uh, uh, Jesus uh, was told uh, that the, the one whom you love is sick. Uh, he comes down. The Jews said, oh, look at he's weeping, how he, he loved them. Uh, and this is something, amen, that, that is, is pronounced. It's something that's a, a, an exclamation point, amen, that Jesus loved Mary. Jesus loved Martha. Jesus loved La Jesus. He loved these people, but yet, amen, Lazarus was sick, and Lazarus died, and as soon as he heard that he was sick, the Bible says, oh my God, you know, Jesus is like, a, uh, he's sick, uh, oh, say, what should we do? Well, let's wait a little while, let's wait, <laughs> let's wait two more days, I, I don't know if that gives you pause, I don't know if that, have you ever read that and thought to yourself, wait a minute, that, that, that's counterproductive, that's not what you should be doing. God, when I, I called you, I called you, and you know what? I wanted you to come. Where were you? Where are you, right? And Jesus said, I love these people, and I'm going to wait. Ever wondered why God said, you know, I'm going to wait two days? He told his disciples, you know what? I'm going to go down to Judea, and uh, uh, we're going we're gonna to see our brother because he's sleeping. And uh, they're like, oh, well, if he's sleeping, why don't, we don't need to go down there. He must be okay. And he said, no, 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 he's dead. And you know, I'm glad for your sake that I wasn't there. And I wonder somehow that 
If Jesus wasn't making this point that, you know what, I'm glad, uh, amen, that I wasn't there physically, amen, because I would, have ha- I would have let him die in front of you. I would have been there, and, and then where, you, where would your faith be, right? We'd be crushed. How, my goodness, it's one thing if you weren't there and he wasn't healed, but if you were standing right there when Lazarus took his last breath uh, and uh, the, he died, amen, uh, people, I mean, can you handle that, amen? Jesus said, you know what, I'm glad I wasn't there. I wonder sometimes if Jesus, he stayed behind two more days because he wanted to make this miracle real. Now, this is the the part of the scripture I I want you to see. Uh, the, the, The Bible says in John 11, 20, the Bible says in Martha... When she heard that Jesus was coming down, met him, and and Mary was sitting in the house. And Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know know uh, whatsoever you ask of God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know he'll rise in the last resurrection, in the last day. You know, I believe that that Martha wanted to see her brother alive, but I have a hard time believing that Martha believed that Jesus would do that. Martha reminds me a lot of myself, a lot of people that I know, a lot of uh, situations that I've been in, a lot of people that I've had to deal with, amen. As you and I, amen, we look at this and we see this was real. This was something that happened. This, uh, uh, Lazarus really was sick, Lazarus really uh, was buried, Lazarus was in the tomb, this was not, this wasn't a joke, this wasn't a pretend thing, this is something that this family felt, that Martha and Mary was now, they were in this incredible situation of losing uh, uh, this man, uh, a man that, uh, you know, probably was the breadwinner, the supporter of the family, and that culture, these women, uh, amen, lose that uh, support system, and they they're lost, man. They're, they're, they're in the streets. And this is a real thing that's happening to her. Just like the situations that happen to you, they're real. The, 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 the crisis, the things that happen to you and I, they're real. We're, 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 we're feeling this. Amen. This is not a joke. This is not something, uh, amen, made up. This isn't just something in a book that you read, but this is something that is happening. And you get up every morning uh, and it's there. And you go to bed every night and it's there. And the pressure, amen, is there. And you wonder sometimes, God, uh, why weren't you? Have you ever been there? God, where were you? Where are you? I remember my wife coming home one day and giving me the news that she had been to the doctor that she'd been diagnosed with uh, third stage breast cancer, right? Stage three, almost stage four. And when you're faced with things like this, amen, they're it, it comes out of a book, and it comes uh, out of uh, some kind of a, a world, amen, but here you and I are, are actually brought into a place like uh, Martha and Mary, amen, that Jesus was saying, you know what, uh, uh, I am the resurrection, I am, the, I know that, and so this is the first thing that happens is that Jesus begins to dispel, uh, amen, the, the sweet by and by mentality, you know, you and I, we can get to, uh, where we're in these pressure situations, we, we tend to escape to this, uh, this religious uh, fantasia place where we, we want to escape, amen, the reality of the moment, uh, and we, we see all kinds of things, amen. We begin to believe, all, well, I know it's going to be okay in the sweet, but it doesn't help right now, does it? <laughs> Lord, I believe you. You know how you like that guy when Jesus said, uh, if you believe All things are possible. Do you believe? I like this guy. He says, Lord, I do believe. But I really don't believe. (laughs) I I do believe. But you got to help my unbelief. (laughs) I don't know if you're going to. I can relate to that. It's like, I I do believe. I think. (laughs) I hope. 
help my unbelief. <laughs> I mean, and, and you see this happening, amen, and, and Jesus is wonderful about this. He, he begins to confront, amen, uh, and uh, he, he begins to, 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 and you know, Jesus is great confronters, as, uh, as we see in, in John chapter 4, when Jesus walks up to this woman and begins to talk to this woman, uh, amen, and she sa- he says, you know, I'm going to give you life, and uh, you know, if you, if you drink of this, you'll never thirst again, and she says, whoa, man, that's awesome. Uh, give me some of this water. Let me, let me taste this water that you're going to have. And he says, well, why don't you go get your husband? <laughs> All this awkward moment, you know, it's like, uh-oh. Well, I, I, I'm not married. And, and she says, rightly so, Jesus said. Hey, man, you've been married five times. And, and the man you're living with, you're not married to. Wow, uh, I perceive that you're a prophet. <laughs> you know? it, it brought it down to reality, didn't he? And immediately she says, well, this is the mountain that we worship in, and she gets religious, and, and this is a tendency that you and I, we, begin, we have a tendency, amen, we're in that pressure situation to really believe God, amen, and, uh, you know, we, wanna, we want to uh, uh, escape into this, uh, this uh, religious world as this woman does, and she says, uh, amen, uh, uh, she begins to talk about this mountain where uh, her forefathers were, and she began to get religious, amen, as you and I begin to see this. Uh, amen, this is exactly what happens. She changes the subject, and she, she deflects, amen, uh, uh, to, to other, other things, you know, and she, she, you know, she starts uh, this whole thing about, you know, Samaritan lives matter, you know. That's not what I'm talking about, right? This is human nature. When we're challenged to, to really confront the situation where we need to believe God, amen, we, we tend, amen, to deflect, don't we? We tend, amen, to get religious. We tend to, I don't know how many crises I've, I've had to uh, uh, be there in hospitals and, and living rooms and the news comes, a tragedy happens and, and real challenging things begin to happen and, and people tend to, to fall into this religious unbelief. Do you know what I mean? You know, it just makes me wonder... Martha, and I think Jesus picked up on this, and I think he picks up on this when we, it happens to us, when, when God is challenging you to do something for God, when God is, you see the obstacles, you don't think this is, you can, you can see this happening, that uh, Lazarus is dead, amen, but Jesus is trying to get us to believe him. She says, a sweet by and by, I know it's going to happen in the sweet by and by. Lord, I know that you're in control, really. (laughs) Martha, it seems to me that Martha was a little bit fighting. You know, what's amazing to me is that Jesus goes down and says, where have you buried him? Oh, oh, (laughs) wait, 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 hold on. Yeah, let's, so they go down to the tomb, right? And Jesus says, roll away the stone. And did you, did you catch what Martha, amen, and, and the Bible's very explicit about who it was. Martha, uh, the sister whom the one that died, uh, uh, went to Jesus and says, wait a minute, uh, uh, Jesus, you don't understand, amen. Uh, uh, you, you know, he, she's almost uh, trying to stop him, saying, you know what, uh, he st- it's been, he's been dead four days. May I remind you, he's been dead four days? You could have been here two days earlier, you know what I mean? If you had not have waited, you could have been here a little earlier. You know, there's a significance behind four days, you know. Because in the Jewish religion, amen, you have three days to, uh, uh, to wash the dead and to, to wrap and to incense. This is why Jesus, when they went down the third day, amen, uh, Jesus was risen from the dead. Uh, the fourth day, they, they wouldn't have gone. They, because when, if, you, if you minister, if you go to a dead body on that fourth day, uh, you'd be declared unclean. It it was another way of saying it's too late. This has gone too far. 
And Martha is almost resisting Jesus, saying, wait a minute, uh, you, don't, uh, you know, he's been dead four days, he's ceremonially unclean, we can't roll away the stone, we can't go in there, we can't touch him, uh, amen, this is impossible, it's, it's gone beyond, uh, amen, fixing, uh, and now we're just going to have to live with it, basically is what she's saying, and she, you know, have you ever, have you ever had God uh, really challenge you, amen, and you're, you're almost like Mary, Martha, and saying, you know, you know don't embarrass don't embarrass me in front of my family. You know, don't, don't embarrass me in front of my friends. Don't challenge me to do something that's going to make me uncomfortable. He was exposing the issue. Martha wanted her brother to live. There's no doubt about it. But, but at what cost? To expose a man this... This unbelief to roll away the stone. See, the issue is never the issue, isn't it? You know, God, amen, what he's, he's pressing upon the people of God, amen, is he wants to roll away the stone. He wants to expose, amen, what's happening. He wants to, he wants to bring about, amen, uh, uh, to open this tomb uh, so the truth, uh, amen, would come out and we can, we can see a miracle happen. We can see this resurrection life. And that's what he was, he was telling, uh, amen, Martha, Martha, amen, you're, you're talking about the sweet by and by. It's all going to work out. It's all, in a perfect world, in the, in, in, some cosmos world, some million years from now, we're going to look back and say, oh, it was, uh, you had, you were in control the whole time, and Jesus was saying, I am the sweet by and by. (laughs) I am a million miles from now. I am, amen, the answer. I am the resurrection. I'm standing right in front of you. If you would let me, amen, roll the stone away. How many know tonight if, if Jesus would roll the stone away, then uh, there that, that death is going to be exposed. Uh, amen. The, those grave clothes are going to have to come off. Uh, and there's, a, you know, how much do we, what are we willing, amen, to do? What are we willing to just let God, amen, roll away the stone in the death of our lives? Yeah. I remember my dad ran off with his mistress and he had uh, was in the process of divorcing my mother he had been saved at one time but he he could not let this go and i remember it's, it was really a, a difficult thing to hear this but i said dad you know what mom will take you back because she's a believer, she's, she doesn't want a divorce, she doesn't want, she, he'll t- why don't you just come back, and why don't you just, uh, uh, why don't you give it another try, man, give Jesus your life, and, and you know what my dad said to me, it was interesting, he says, you know what, John, if you or your mother knew what kind of man I really was, you wouldn't ask that question. Skeletons. His perception of his sin was all wrong. We know Jesus could forgive him, right? Even I knew that. I said, Dad, you haven't done anything worse than people in the Bible have done. He can forgive you. You don't understand the grace of God. But see, to him, to Martha, don't don't expose this unbelief. Don't expose this this death. Don't expose, amen, the... You know, I, I read this story and I think of, I think of everybody around Jesus, every person, the disciples, the, the Jews, uh, uh, the, the, the Mary and Martha, every one of them, amen, in, in a sense failed this test. And Jesus from the beginning was saying, uh, this is not unto death, this is not unto death, this is not, unto, but he died, he's going to rise again. Oh, no, in the sweet, no, no, I am the resurrection, you know, and he, it's almost like, come on, man, this is why Jesus went. Wept. Have you ever, have you ever read this, the, the scriptures where the Bible said Jesus was frustrated? He goes, how long must I deal with you? You know what I mean? How long must I put up with your unbelief? Because what Jesus does, what he does in us is he wants to expose. 
There's some here, if you knew what kind of person I was, you wouldn't, Jesus wouldn't love me. Well, he does. He knows everything, doesn't he? Amen. Amen. We're not exposing anything. We're, we're, Jesus already knows exactly what's in that tomb. He knows what's behind the door. Can I can encourage you? You know, I've watched people in the, my ministry They're holding back. They're hesitating. They're believers. They're good people. There's no doubt about it. They're wonderful folks, but they're they're holding back. They're not giving, they're not believing God for miracle power. They they keep on this cycle every three months. And what happens, amen, is you you challenge them and you challenge them, amen. And, uh, uh, you know, what God wants to do is He wants to open the doors. He wants to roll away the stone. He wants to do something, amen, and let the cockroaches run, amen, if they got to run, amen. Let God, amen, expose uh, the secret sin. Let God expose, amen, the the undisciplinedness. Let God expose, uh, amen, those problems that you're having. And this is how God is going to (laughs) resurrect your marriage. You're not going to let anybody know what's going on behind the scenes. It is what it is. But you know what? It'll stay that way until you let God roll Roll the stone away. God said, if, if you sin, the Bible tells us, amen, if you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive your sins and all of your unrighteousness. He's here tonight. To, he's here tonight. If you would let God roll away. I remember sitting there, not just once. I'm, the night I got saved, Yes. But many, many, many times in conference and in revival services, I've sat there and I knew God wanted to roll the stone away, but I'm resisting, saying, no, I I don't want to expose that part of my life. I don't want to expose, amen, God. I I I don't want to go there. I don't want to talk about this. Let's go. Let's get out of here. You're going too long, right? You're flipping off the the tube right now, saying, yeah, I've had enough of this. But that's how resurrection comes. Somebody made a, a wonderful statement to me. He's talking about resurrection. And he said, John, there's got to be a crucifixion before there's a resurrection. There's got to be a death before there's new life. There's got to be a rolling away of the stone, the exposing of our hearts to God. And God has exposed your heart tonight. He's rolled a stone away. He's called out your name. And tonight, God is dealing with your heart. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If you would confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you of all of your sins. Oh, we like Martha. That's going to be okay. No, it's not going to be okay, Martha. I am the resurrection of life. I want you to bow your head tonight. There are people here, you have... Monumental needs. You're living in in a state of mourning. Like Martha, like Mary, you don't know what maybe to do. You don't know what is happening. And, And tonight, God wants to resurrect the situation. He wants to. But he wants to first roll away this stone, this This thing that we're hiding behind. And tonight God is dealing with your heart. If you're here or you're on live streaming. And you know that Jesus loves you. He cares about you. And he is He's there to help you. But he wants to expose. I remember the night I got saved. I was so afraid. I lifted my hand with no intention of doing anything more. But. But they told me, you you need to come to this altar and you need to confess Jesus Christ and ask him to come into your heart. And I I refused to go. I didn't want to admit what I was. And you know what? I, I thank God somebody came to me and said, look, I'll pray with you. And I went to that altar. And you know what? Tonight, God rolled away the stone. I 
I let all of the cockroaches out. I let all of the sin pour out. I let all of the failures. I let all of the compromise. And, and you know, tonight, that was the first time I've ever done that. And I received redemption and, and forgiveness of my sins. And since then, I have, I have come to that place in my life, amen, where God is rolling away the stones and uh, rolling away, amen, and exposing my, 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 my apprehensions and my undisciplines and, and my, 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 my sin. And you know what? Um, God, every time has come, He's resurrected my life. There are people here, you know where you need to be. You know you need to be right with God. But you're afraid. Maybe what you need to do. And God is exposing, if, if not, He's not exposing it to everyone, but He's exposing it to your own heart, and He's having you confronted. You're here, or you're on live stream, and you want to come to Jesus. If you lift your hand, you know what? Jesus has the power to forgive sin. He, he shed His blood on the cross of Calvary. Thank you for that hand. Thank God, amen, for honest hearts. Anybody else tonight, God is dealing with your heart. You need to give your life to Jesus Christ. And tonight, uh, it's worth it to let uh, uh, roll away the stone. Expose my heart, God. And God is dealing with you. Anybody else? Maybe you're on live stream. Tonight, this dear woman, amen, lifted her hand. Did you, did you mean that? You mean that, amen? I believe you did. Would you mind getting out of your chair and coming? Someone's going to come and pray with you, amen? And, and as someone meets her up here, amen, I want to pray with those online, amen, You're, someone come and pray with our sister, thank you, amen, thank you, amen, praise God, I want you to say this, this, this evening if you're online, and maybe you want to join me at this altar, but I want to pray a sinner's prayer with you, and you know what, tonight God is going to come down where you are, and he's going to set you free, there's a burden that's going to be lifted up off of your shoulders. There's going to be a stone. There's going to be grave clothes that fall off. The, Jesus said, loose him and let him go. And, and tonight, God is going to loose, amen, something. A burden is going to come off of your shoulders. I remember the day I got saved. What a, what a feeling it was to be free. And I want you to say these words. Dear Jesus, uh, I know that you are God. I know that you died on the cross for my sins, that you took my place. And I'm asking you to forgive me of all of my wrongdoings, all of my sin. Come into my heart, and I commit my life to you tonight to follow you, to do what you ask me to do, God. And I ask you that you would forgive me and come into my heart and do a work in my life in Jesus' name. I wonder in this place tonight if you would stand. God is dealing with people tonight because there are issues. It may not be a brother who has died or a diagnosis from the doctor or a medical bill or a, a tragedy. But tonight, amen, God is dealing with your heart in some way. A miracle needs to happen. But God is saying, I, I'm going to roll away the stone. I'm going to expose your heart. I'm, I need to expose, I need to roll the, the facade away that I can get into your heart. And that not that he could get in, but that you could get out. And God is dealing with your heart because tonight, amen, there are things you need to believe God for. And tonight you're here. And you need to say, yes, Lord, amen. I'm going to let you have my heart. I'm going, to ex I'm going to let you expose myself. God, I'm going to come and I'm going to deal with this issue, whether it's a secret sin, whether it's a, a you know, problem that's, uh, that's ruining your marriage. God is dealing with your heart. I want you to come to these altars, amen. We're going to believe God, amen, for miracles to happen. Maybe tonight, amen. Uh, you're, you're sick in body, and tonight we're going to pray for you. We're going to believe God for you, but amen, God is going to do a work. Uh, we need to roll away the stone and let resurrection life, amen. Jesus Christ uh, died for our sins. The Bible says by his stripes uh, we are healed, amen, uh, that he, uh, amen, not only substituted himself, uh, amen, but redemption. Uh, the idea of redemption is that he bought us back. He redeemed us, uh, amen, and this, this thought of physical healing uh, is part of redemption. You are no longer your own. Uh, you're no longer the world's. Uh, you're no longer the devil's, amen. You are God's, uh, and God, amen, can redeem. Uh, God can begin to 
to restore. God can begin to redeem. God wants to reverse that curse that's in your life. In Jesus' name, God, we thank you tonight for all that you're doing. We ask you, God, to come down into this place and move, oh God, I pray, Lord, upon your people. God, deal with us that we would even rise up, oh God, uh, that we would believe beyond belief, uh, that we would, uh, Father, even though the situation might stink, uh, even though it seems impossible, even though it seems too far gone, uh, God, we're going to believe you. We're going to believe you tonight, and God help us, uh, Father, tonight, that we are going to see the salvation of our God. Uh, we are going to see, oh God, we're going to believe you. We speak words, uh, oh God, we speak life uh, into the situations. We speak life. Oh God, I thank you, Lord. Re ba ba ra ba, Lord, ro bo ro bo re ba ti ti ele 